Hello, this is Mikel Campos and Alan Fragman from TD Survival. This week we have a very special guest, the first guest to come to TD Survival. Am I the first? Yes. Yeah, you're the first. <laughs> wow, now I feel important. All right. So introduce yeah, so yourself, introduce please. Yourself. Well, my name is Luc Girard. I work at Shed in Montreal. Welcome to TD Survival. Thank you. You Welcome. have quite beautiful studios. It's quite big. And I, I seen all the employees they have there. Yeah. Quite a payroll, I, can, I have to say. Yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. see our office on, on China. That is way oh, bigger. Okay. Well, of course, you can't do all the work here. It's just like... Yeah. yeah. I understand now. Okay, so we're going to talk today about her... Hair, hair grooming, and yeah. fur, I guess, and fur, and cool. yeah, furry places, and yeah, maybe for, not. So. <laughs> yeah, furry places. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. it's, it's later after midnight. Uh, it's only for adults. <laughs> okay, so look, can you show us a little bit about what is uh, the work that you are doing at Shed on terms of uh, hair and hair styling, and uh, maybe we can play a movie. All right. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'd like to thank Shed for letting me come here and reveal some of our secrets. Uh, of course, I'm just a representative here. I do the hair, but I have other people helping me, so I will not take all the credit for the work. It's teamwork, and uh, without further ado, I'm just going to play the uh, latest uh, ad from Shed that we did. It's for uh, Quebec Grocer, and it's uh, IGA. And here you can see all the characters that have been uh, groomed and simulated. Wow, that's it's awesome. Wow. Yeah, the hair looks great. Yeah. How it moves when they shake their head, it's awesome. Yeah, it's really great. and With uh, the same styling too, which is tricky. It's not just yeah. like flowing. No, no, well, you have to keep the styling, that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, I think we, we should... We should uh, also thank uh, Sylvain and... Yeah, Renaud. Sylvain Lebeau, which is one um, of the, the FX director, I think, yeah. at Shed. Renault, which is the president. And all the team and also... All the team. And I would like to also give a big shout out to Dominique Kerouac, which is the other guy I work with I at Shed. And he's actually the one who first uh, who introduced the technique I'm going to explain to you at Shed. He's the one who did the original R&D. Uh, so, uh, yeah, lots of credit goes to him. He knows everything and he's not afraid to share. And so I think it's a good thing. That's awesome. So, yeah, it is. <laughs> thank you, Dominique. So, yeah, and if you, if you are curious about these people, you can always look at the who we are and you can look at the different people that should appear on the bottom in a few seconds. Ooh, Ooh there yeah. you go. So, who is who? <laughs> oh, this is Max. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so. Let's start uh, talking about more techniques and stuff. Um, what what kind of tool do you use normally for uh, do the? Well, hair? we are working with uh, Softimage, and we render all in Softimage, and so the hair is it's much easier to do the hair in Softimage, and then can and render it with all the rest yeah. of the because we use Arnold here at work. So of course we started by trying the native hair tools in Softimage, but it uh, ended up being really uh, quickly limited, I think, for our needs. So then we just turn around to ICE uh, and we found a nice uh, tools, nice set of tools uh, called Kristinka, made by Ento uh, Matkovic. Yeah, right? I know, I know Kristinka, yeah. So. There you yeah, go. Kristinka's so, great. Yeah, so yeah. our tools are based on that. We just uh, adapted the tools to yeah. our needs and just the more you, we use them, the more we yeah. just like stuff in the yeah. Yeah, it's like kind of a remix. No, you take what you you found on on internet and all the. Uh, there you go. Yeah, the there's lots of pieces. There's a few pieces from Milena as well, but it's mostly uh, Christinka. Uh, and now, well, it's almost shed shed hair, but it's yeah, it's it becomes kind of a proprietary mix. Yeah. thing. Yeah, exactly. So basically, uh, we have uh, Christinka, we have uh, Milena, and we have Milena. a ton of ice things. Yeah, it's and all done in ice. And we have... Uh, so maybe I can load one of the characters that we did. Yeah, that would be cool. So we can look... Uh, I'm going to start by showing you a short-haired character. Because there's mainly two types that we do. Well, there's, of course, fur with creatures and stuff. Yeah. And there's long hair like the ladies. Yeah, because... Most of the ladies. Depends of the... Ca 
I mean, kind of uh, hair or fur, you, you have like different approaches. For example, if it's yes. long, long hair, it's uh, one approach. If it's short hair, it's another approach. Totally. We made it into one set of nodes. Uh, well, one, one, only one system, but there's are some nodes that are different. And of course, some uh, shaping tools that we use that are different. But still, uh, we can mix and match the two. Uh -huh. If we want somebody with a short, ba which are short bangs and long mm -hmm. hair at the bottom, it's, it, uh, it's bottom at the back. It works. I'm really <laughs> yeah, sorry about well, that. the back <laughs> lost the name. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, cool. So we have the first model here. It's from the, the actual commercial. Yeah, that it's one of before. the first that you, well, it's one of the first that you see. It's one of the employees. So it always starts with a uh, design drawing done by Benoit Thériot at Shed, yeah. we, who does the uh, the drawing of the character, what okay. it will look like. Okay, so the also the hairstyle, it becomes market for from uh, these original designs? Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, he decides on the hair he wants to have on this one. And, but of course, he gives me great liberty uh, in what the style can be. But of course, he, the drawings are approved by the client. Uh -huh, by yeah. IGA, yeah. so of course what I do has to be similar, but since it's a 2D drawing, it leaves a lot to interpretation. Yeah. Uh, so first step is really the drawing, and then I go into the internet and I look at dudes or dudettes that have the same hairstyle. Yeah, so you look for reference. Now, yeah. reference is very important always. To it is, because detail. In, no? totally, because in this, um, I know in this campaign, there's one character that has, a, that had a drawing that didn't, um, that wasn't really possible in real life or that didn't correspond to anything in real life. Uh -huh. So we looked and looked for references and I didn't find any. So I just tried to do it, to do it out of yeah. my head and it just ended up being the longest character it took to work. Uh -huh. And it was, it's not, certainly not my favorite. So. Okay. We will not reveal the name of the character. No. But, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I, no, I, they, I let you guess who, who yeah. is the character and. Maybe so, you can post it later on Facebook and so yeah. And if you have guess. a good reference, it's yeah. so much easier to know what you expect, what you want to do. And of course, we are going in this uh, in this campaign. We're going for a cartoonish look, so mm -hmm. it gives space for lots of interpretation and styling. And since we have to do lots of characters for a short amount of time, yeah. well, we don't go for a full realistic look with all the details and everything. Mm -hmm. We just want to have a nice styling and something that looks good. Uh, so this is the goal for this. Oh, that, yeah, that makes sense. You can have to do all. The yeah, yeah, because I ended up spending on average three days per person to style the hair. Yeah. Wow. If I don't take into account the one that took really longer than the <laughs> other ones. Okay, just pop up this <laughs> yeah. from the list and. And I'm always trying to start from another character that I did so I can reuse yeah. stuff and just okay so it's like yes, it one to... help to another and you you can go faster and yeah because so speed is really an important uh, element when you're trying you're yeah. working in advertising and you don't have that much budget to do yeah every... exactly because I I read the Yesterday, uh, on, I think it's in the Softimax list, uh, GS was posting, uh, yes. some information about the production. And one of the information was that how, how, how long it take it to do one of these, uh, advertisement. And it's, it's around, uh, two months, two months roughly. Right. Yeah. But it's from designs to, to final render and composite. And so that it's not too, too much time for, for do. It is not. And in this campaign, I think I had like something like 13 characters to groom. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe yeah. half of them were, let's say, uh, hero characters that you can mm -hmm. see front and center in the camera, and some others were like only, yeah. uh, extras. Yeah. So the extras, if you look carefully, are not that well groomed. <laughs> but <laughs> they, it's not what's important. Yeah. They, yeah, but they don't pay attention to see. No, well, that's the thing. You just <laughs> don't want to have, you just oh, want to have color that moves. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. They're going yeah. to the grocery store. They're yeah. not gonna. Uh, yeah. I have to recognize that I, I was in chair to, on the rigging side, and, uh, yeah, it's the same. I, I, of course. I spent like, for the six, I think, was six or uh, main characters that take a lot of time, but the others are just, uh, <laughs> let's say, quick air versions. And one, <laughs> and one big secret that we have is that one of the lady characters was actually a man when he was modeled. It's a lady. <laughs> yeah, oh. well, it's a transgender, and I think we just want to represent everybody in yeah, our yeah, spots. I think, yeah, I think, yeah, it's a... Uh, but we just, was, we were short of a lady, and we were one extra man, and we just put boobs on him and it worked <laughs> yeah yeah I'm, um, i'll let you look at the, at the ad and do you know which one it is michael 
I don't, I don't, no, I don't remember, man. No, don't make. Well, it was a source of great fun. <laughs> oh my! I, yeah, I don't want you to just make slap it. makeup as a texture on him, and everybody looks like a lady. <laughs> I, well, you don't know which one it is. Yeah, another quiz for the guest. Yeah, we, we're gonna have a lot of guests today. <laughs> Quest situations. All well, right. So let's uh, put our hands on the uh, Softimesh and let's see what uh, you can. Yeah, of you. course. So I received the modeling, of course, uh, of the character, and after, once I'm done, I well, once the modeling is done, I should say. I just go uh, to create a scalp since the um, the hair is gonna not gonna be emitted from directly from the geometry mm -hmm. that is deformed by alembic because we use alembic. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, well, you said to me that isolate is there. Yeah, okay, that's so I just go and extract some polygons and have some great resolutions in there because I'm gonna use lots of weight maps. So mm -hmm. I want to have at least a few points to be oh, able to smooth out my. Okay, that's a super tricky thing. So. Lot resolution, not for the hair emission, but for the way maps to have control. Yeah, exactly. The hair emission does, uh, couldn't care less, but it's only about having yeah, weight maps. So uh, that's it. So I just grow hair out of this, and I start with a simple point cloud. Well, I should look into the right section of mine. <laughs> okay. It's supposed to be clean, but well, it's <laughs> there oh, you go. On. And there you go. So it's a simple ice cloud, uh, which I just well, I see simple. Uh, which is only on, uh, I start only on the modeling stack. It's not a simulated stack to start with. And I have nodes that are here to just, uh, for the emission of the hair. Uh, -huh. uh and I always emit hair guides to start with, which is a limited amount of hair, uh -huh. which go, which goes fast, which is one, which are the ones that are going to be, uh, cached to disk, uh, -huh. uh which are not going to be rendered, but they might get simulated. Okay. So it's based in, a, in, a, in curves. It, it's, or is the hair from a, a soft image hair guide? Uh, no, it's simply strands, pure uh, strands oh, that pure are emitted. Strands? Yeah, pure that, strands. That works like if a I, guide. Uh, yeah, if okay, I okay, 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 okay. Well, okay. if I ex, uh, if I unplug, Ooh. I have like straight <laughs> strands that are. Well, some people have a look like this. I know. Yeah, I know some. I think, yeah, yeah, I think. Uh, but it's not maybe the Green Day guy, the, the singer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. Just yes. put them black, and it's yeah. the right one. Done. So I start with straight strands like this. And after that, it's just a series of nodes uh, that we have custom made and that we have like out of Kristinka that just gives the styling. And to give the, uh, I'm sorry, it's a, it is a bit small for me. There we go. And to just give the, um, maybe I can hide the hat. I don't know what's underneath it, but yeah, it's another hat. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's who tricky. would want to wear only one hat? <laughs> so. So the first of all, I just go with um, a set of nulls or a set of curves that gives me the uh, the um, I don't know uh, how direction? to say the direction of oh. the hair. So it's a nice way to oh. just calm the hair in a non-destructive way because yeah. uh, you can, of course, with the native hair, you can always uh, use the brush. But mm -hmm. if you just do one bad mm -hmm. brush and you don't have any, yeah. so you, you can mess up everything. Yeah, I see. So you, you use basically the uh, transforms of uh, nulls to yeah. uh, modify strands based on that transform. There you go. Combined. Just Yeah, so that just gives the general uh, direction of a very strand. And, and it does some your, kind of interpolation. Yes, I see you're using a group. So you, you, you're using the group from the ice tree. So if you yes. were to duplicate one of those nulls, for example, yes. you can keep. Because of course, I way. always start by doing like one of the one half of the head. Mm -hmm. And then I just duplicate it on the other side and oh. then just adjust. So mm -hmm. of course, I can just work one half. And it's really useful when you're doing an animal because usually animals have fur that is pretty similar yeah. on both sides. So you start so with that. And is that a Christinka node that you're using for that? Uh, yes, it's pretty much Christinka. Yeah, that we haven't touched that much. What we did as a change, I think, is that Christinka uses uh, nerves to emit from. Mm -hmm. And we found that it, well, I don't really like working with nerves uh, m much more than really necessary. So I just changed the setup so I can use poly polygons so it's easier to just okay. add add polygons and so remove we and to polygon. yeah wow. so we emit from polygons so that's one little tweak that we did what, what, what's the name of the the node that you based it off uh, the node? wow uh, that's a, a good <laughs> that's question. a good question it is maybe if <laughs> I, I look, everyone's trying to 
Oh well, Wonder, I think it's I don't know because you know here we all renamed the the the, the, the nodes because <laughs> we just did the little cleanup and we renamed them so it's they are easier to find for me. Yep. But I think it's something like groom fur or groom fur groom or something like this okay. that you just plug and then you have to plug another node that is called a uh, vector field. I think you can look at here vector field. And here I chose to do it with nulls, so I have vector field by no, nulls. I put my group. Sorry. <laughs> I put my groups, uh, and then it plugs there, and it just gives the uh, direction of the styling. Cool. That's super One cool. basic thing also is that the setup uh, also works with UVs and tangent maps. So when you start your emitter, you give him a tangent map that is based on the UVs. So the hair by default just go on a certain direction based on the UVs, uh -huh. but most often than not, this is not enough. It's not really easy to work with and to style. Yeah. So I just... It's just to start with a rough thing. Yeah, a rough thing. On. Let's say it goes all uh, okay. in one way, and then after that, the wow. nulls gives you much more yeah. uh, possibility. <laughs> when you, you say uh, tangent maps, you, do you mean the submerge property tangent maps? Yes, okay. as simple as that. So the system reference uh, will just go take the information there, and, wow. and you can see that we have <laughs> center of the head of the head <laughs> no we have uh lashes and uh high brows okay. and those ones we don't use nulls because they are really easy easily groomable with only the uvs mm -hmm. so if i take my uh, i'll try to select my uh, my emission geometry and uh if i look with, and then it's just uh here i just uh just deformed my uh my uvs so it just grooms the the lashes differently. Wow. So there you go. So for simple things like eyelashes and brow, I just use the UVs. Otherwise, mm -hmm. for more details, I use a group of, a group yeah. of nulls to just yeah. give it. I, I don't know why. I was thinking that, for example, the, the eyelashes, because it's a, it's a, it's a part that we move more and it's, it will be more complicated, but it, it looks simple than the, the, yeah, the, right. the, oh yeah, of course. The eyelashes are really, I have like some compounds that I made and I just have men eyelashes and women eyelashes. <laughs> I just plug them in and everybody oh. has the same and just give them longer, shorter, and that's it. I see. And oh. of course the client had a little comment at first because the guys had like eyelashes much shorter than in real life. But still on screen, they thought that they, it, g it gave them a feminine look. So I had to like tone them down 20% of, to 50%. Okay. So it's really short. They short, are super uh, short. They are uh, like 50% opacity. So they are see through. Mm -hmm. They're still there for my pleasure. But, uh, yeah. in the end, just giving them realistic yeah. eyelashes, they didn't go with the client. Wow. So yeah. So and then, um, so maybe, once you have the, the all these, can just unplug grooming. some stuff and then we can plug them back. As simple as that. So you're gonna continue with uh, connecting again? I yeah. Think? Well, I was unconnecting, so I can tell, look, show you what it looks when it's unconnected. So you can see that uh, with the nulls that give the direction, you pretty much have already a little kind of look. Because in the node here, you also have uh, where you want to give bending to the strand uh -huh. uh, and which if you want them to bend on the side and everything. So you all set this up there. So you have already a result with only this first node. But after that, you just want to add some nice details. You just want to isolate some parts of the hair grooming and treat them separately because mm -hmm. you need um, you need it to do it some, something different. And you always, you always want to have some randomized nodes, some triple, uh, well, randomized nodes, because yeah. hair yeah. is yeah. naturally messy, even if it's all groomed. So everything that you use, you always go with triple lenses and, or you go with, uh, with randomized. And I always reference some weight maps, as I mm -hmm. said, because if I want to work only on the bangs, because the bangs needs to be longer, Mm -hmm. Well, then I have a weight map on my emitter that only yeah. isolate this part. Okay, yeah, because some some parts can be more like uh, curly, but other can be more straight, depending on the area of, yes. the, of the head. There are some. Yeah, because and here you can see that his bangs are much longer than the rest of it because it's part of the look. That's the reference that I had. So uh, I need to treat them specially with that. And one of the one of the hard things with uh, this campaign was that a lot of characters, well, the employees are wearing hats. And it's really not, 
easy to yeah. deal with hair and hats because you yeah. want the hair to be close to the hat, but you don't want the hat, the hair to go through the hat. Yeah, yeah that is. Yeah, that if is I say hat one more time, I get a bonus, right? As uh, we discussed before the hat. <laughs> oh, the bonus is for me. Sorry. <laughs> oh, you lost Dang. it. Oh. Dang. So there you go. And you want to have, of course, uh, different lengths just to have l some nice randomization. So it's all key. Of course, here the color is irrelevant because I just put a, a color that it's, that's easy to visualize for me because I need to look at my style. If I put the final color on it, I won't see a thing. Uh, one of the important nodes for the look is the clumping node. So this gives, as you can see, the difference oh. between hair that sticks together in chunks because everybody's hair do that. You see here that all the hairs don't want to know yeah, nothing about each it's, other. It's, yeah, exactly. It's more like, uh, yeah. I don't know, unreal thing. Yeah, of course, because it, it would correspond to really, really clean hair, like a kids that just went out of the bath. Yeah. Yeah. He would have this kind of hair, but it's really not a look yeah. that is common. Five in, seconds later, yeah, five <laughs> seconds later, <laughs> full of mud and yeah, dirtiness, it, it and it clumps. <laughs> and of course, as I said earlier, this these are the guides, so we don't have a lot of these hairs. We have uh, okay. limited all, amount. All, this, all the thing that we see right now, it's the guides, only the guides. Yeah, it's the guides. They are limited. We're not going to render them. We're just going to use them to create the render hair later. You can see that I have uh, one thousand five hundred guides. Uh -huh. So this is easily uh, writing a cacheable to disk, okay. and it's easy to work, easy to show in the viewport, and that's what I'm okay, looking for. Okay, so this basically is, is the, the also not only the grooming and the styling thing, but also it will contain uh, the dynamics. It yes. Will, it will calculate all the movement, all the... Uh, exactly, yeah, because the hair has to follow the character, mm -hmm. even if, uh, as with this character, since he has a hat and a hair pretty close to his head, it doesn't have any dynamics on it because it would look just weird that he yeah. has lots of winds and is inside of a grocery store and it was just it would be just overkill. Yeah. But still if I just move the character from frame to frame, the hair uh, might follow, but mm -hmm. there won't be any motion blur and we want 3D motion blur. So we always need to write out the cache to disk that mm -hmm. take into account the previous position of the strands and uh, current so we can look at the displacement. Okay, and, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, are you doing any kind of uh, collision or something to for when the hat is touching? Yes, I do. So this is strands away? this is one of the nodes that I'm going to plug in. This is a node that because I made uh, some kind of geometry based on the hat that is closed and this just uh, register if the strand position is inside the hat or outside the hat. Mm -hmm. If it is inside, I'm going to treat it differently later in the render hair because I will want it to stay in place and not be randomized or anything because I don't mm -hmm. want it to go through the hat. So yeah. this is one step I do there. And for the rest, well, depending on the characters, but for the rest, I really try to go um, just... Uh, with my grooming, trying to be as close as possible to the hat, but not go through it, because mm -hmm. it's still the best way to have a nice look instead of oh, just uh, just styling and then putting the hat and saying go outside the hat. It's not gonna look good. <laughs> well, it's look uh, honestly. I think it's uh, it looks more uh, complicated than I was. I thought in the in the beginning. At the beginning, I was thinking, oh yeah, yeah, connect some nodes and uh, <laughs> yeah, connect uh, some nodes. Yeah, of course. But, yeah, it's not like that. <laughs> so we we've done this. And then after that, once the guys are done, uh, we just use a new, I'm going to hide it so we can see the rest. Uh, I just create a new point cloud and these are going to be the rendered hair. And these ones are basically only the guides cloud cloned. So we have exactly the same and then we multiply them and then we just add a layer of effects on top of it. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to reduce the total number of hair because it's not it's going to be hard on the viewport oh, if we do some yeah. half gonna my maybe. laptop can carry everything <laughs> <laughs> or yeah well let's well, let's, let's not try okay. so <laughs> then i unhide my render hair and you can see here i have 10% oh. of the look of the the quantity of the render hair that i will okay. have at the that's end that's only 10% okay. that's 10% I, I wish i have this 10% because <laughs> i'm getting bold in. well he's quite <laughs> he's young he's young he's working at a grocery store is uh in the <laughs> produce section so he's young that's that's why, Mikael. Okay. One day I'm gonna take this all out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to I need to make a, good, a Mikael yeah. style hairstyle that is non hairstyle at all. <laughs> so <laughs> it starts. It only starts with copying the guides, and once the guides are copied, we only I randomize the positive. Well, I multiplicate them. 
mm -hmm. by a certain factor number. Here it's by a hundred. Mm -hmm. And I give them a random, posi a random position just to move them a little bit mm -hmm. from the, from the other one. So it, it looks, uh, so it, it, they are not all in the same place. Uh, if I unconnect all the nodes that I did here for the styling, maybe we can see what it does. Of course, it's hard to see with this color, yeah. but you can see, and you can see already that it's clumped because the node already, the nodes already takes care of that. But if I take this out, you can see oh, that they are yeah, all, it's a big difference. Yeah. yeah, they are all just multiplicated and randomized. And we're back to the look, the kid that gets out of the bat look. So the, <laughs> yeah. the hair that so is you, too. You need to reclump. I need to reclump at this stage because I already yeah. clump for big clumps, but then after I need to do smaller clumps with the render hair. And the way to do it is quite easy. It's that you take the randomize that you just added in. Uh, you keep it at the root, but you don't put as much as at the tip. So everybody meets at the tip, but they are, are different at the root. So it's as simple as that to have some clump and then you have yeah. something that yeah, looks... Yeah, it's a big difference, absolutely. Yeah, it looks uh, much better. Yeah, that's a quality. The other was, eh, yeah, this is quality. And then you're going to say, well, but they are all really, really clumped. He's getting out of the water. And I'm going to say, oh. well, Mikael, I'm going uh, no, to... Alan and Mikael, I'm going to plug in. Okay, in. okay, so I get it. It's clump, reclump, and clump. Yeah, it's always clumping. No, uh -huh. it's no, it's clump, reclump, and then declump. Declump, oh, okay. declump. Yeah. Sorry. Because uh, when right you term? look at people' hair, even the stars when they are all really uh, groomed up, you always have crazy little hairs that go out of place, and this is the, really the key. <laughs> so with that, I just add some randomization to the hair, and the color is going to change as well because I have something to change the color there. But you can just see there that it gets to a much uh, natural look. And that's only done with three types of randomization. One that affects every strand of the hair just a little bit. Mm -hmm. One that affects 10% of the hair just a bit more because, and one that affects, let's say 2% of the hair really crazy mm -hmm. because everybody has crazy hair. When you mm -hmm. look at them into the sunlight, yeah. you can see that they have like crazy strands that go. And mm -hmm. that's another solution. And I'll oh, sorry. I, I, which one, which ones are these are from Christinka and which ones are yours? Which these ones, ones are, are the randomizer are all from Christinka. Are pure Christinka compounds. No? Uh, yeah, Christinka oh. compounds from Ento. Uh, and yeah, these, these are, uh, I think the, uh, the node to copy the strands and to randomize them. We, uh, fiddled with it quite a bit because we needed it to, uh, to do some stuff that we thought was important and that's where you remember that on the guides i just registered all the strand position that were inside the hat well i'm i'm reusing this here so i'm not going to randomize this position because if i randomize them they're going to get out of the hat and i don't want oh, this okay so, so i only randomize what's outside of the hat and okay. what's inside does not look good but you won't see it so it's like kind of, the hat, it's like kind of a smooth deformer or something like that. Avoid to yeah. get the random. Or yeah, just don't do random. Yeah. And I think if I have, yeah, and I have a little push uh, outside of Geo that I just adapted to my needs. And then I just, after that, add that with the with the hat. So if there are any remaining hairs that are, mm -hmm. that are just uh, colliding with it, they are just pushed outside. And then you have something that. That works pretty well. Nice. Of course, uh, if I would have to do an extreme close up, I would have to put some more, more work in to be sure that mm -hmm. it really looks tight. But for what I need, that's, uh, that's it. And wow. you, you mentioned that these are the filler strands. So you're caching the previous point yes, cloud. I am. And this one is always live. This one is always live. It's always on the, because I would not be allowed, I think, to cache these ones because the, because I have to use, uh, well, I can use either Alembic or Ice Cache, but I tried and it makes really, 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 really big caches. I can imagine. It. Yeah. And it takes a really long time. So that's really a matter of time and size. Otherwise I would cache these ones because it would be even more rock solid and mm -hmm. nothing would move. Yeah. But I would like to mark one, one special thing. It's here. It's the way that we work with, with eyes normally. It's that, uh, for example, we, we take like a little part and we, uh, work on that, like the initial guides and later you make the grooming and you catch back and you take this process data and you work again in another eyes tree. 
So you process like byte by byte all your your uh, steps and don't put everything in a big super complicated uh, ice, ice tree. No, I separate it. Um, and it's maybe a bit easier also for everyone because of course uh, in the render scenes, mm -hmm. the guys need to know what they need to render, what they don't need to render. So they are clearly marked with uh, yeah. with groups. They are hidden already. The caches are linked automatically when they are put into a shot thanks to some scripting done by Mikhail. <laughs> Here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <Ooh>. bravo. <laughs> bravo. Um, so yeah, and what after about, that... Uh, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, uh, go ahead. Uh, what about, uh, for example, uh, some s a bit of simulation or yeah i think it, it, it's coming it's it's on the way i think yeah well it, for the, for in this case since his uh his hair is not supposed to move that much as i'm i'm looking at your hair alan and it doesn't <laughs> move while you, while you speak even yeah, if you yeah. well when michael plays with it of course oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, it's not what yeah. you think guys it's only a little massage to get him <laughs> to get uh, relaxed that's it yeah wait for the tv program of tv survival you will see all the <laughs> <laughs> All the weirdness. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yes. So, yeah, for this character, back on the guides, I, I only have some simulated compound that take the strand position at one frame, and at the next frame just moves it accordingly to the emitter. He looks how, which way the emitter moved, and he's going to move the strand the yeah, same way. So it's not and it, it calculates the velocity, because we need that velocity, because if the motion burden is not right, we're going to get yeah. yelled at. Yeah, and when you say calculate the velocity, you mean set set the point velocity. Yeah, self set point yeah. velocity. Yeah, well, uh, and strand velocity. And strand yes. velocity. Yeah, okay. both because they need to look right because that's the first thing they're mm -hmm. gonna notice. They're not gonna notice that your grooming looks good. They're notice that the motion blur is wrong. Oh, it's not motion blur. Yeah, or, or there's no motion blur. So that's the life of the of a yeah. FX artist. And yes. uh, can I show you the result of the uh, little of guy? Of course. Yeah, I was about yeah. to ask for. There you go. So this is Jay. So you can. Whoops, Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you click and you can make the zoom. Oh. Yes. Oh, 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 no. no, no. What, what, what have I done? I'm not good with computers. <laughs> oh, I'm really sorry. Yeah. Where am sorry, I? Sorry, just All right. keep oh, pressing. There you, go. you can zoom in here. So you can look at the, the little styling. Oh, well, thank you. Like this. And you can also see at this stage, it didn't have, when I took the picture, because I took a picture of him, uh, he didn't have any lashes, but you can see his eyebrows already, and you can see the crazy little hairs on the side. Um, so that's pretty much it. So maybe I can show you other short hair styling yeah, that we yeah, did. Yeah, I received some, uh, I posted on, on Facebook, and some friends from Spain say that this, uh, this guy looks a bit like a... Uh, uh, the president of Spain now, oh, right? Yeah, now? I think he did. Is it well? Did did I make him justice? Is it does it look good? Because I don't uh, want to offense any country well, with my want, styling. <laughs> no, I think it's okay. I don't want to enter in politics now. But I yeah, think it's okay. well, I hope. But uh, can you go for the next one? Because it, no, well, it's a girl. lady. This is a little girl. Oh, I'm the, gonna come back. The, oh, the. the this, this man, this man, it's our <laughs> football trainer for the uh, uh, selection in Spain. It's Vicente del Bosque. <laughs> it's uh, our homage for... Of course, I did the homage without knowing who he was, but I guess I just felt it into my heart to give a tribute to that guy. Yeah, I give you I the, did it. Well, you I did, you, you did, but I did, for the but, <laughs> but yeah, but it's always pictures taken from so afar that you cannot see his yeah. hairstyle or anything, so it's not good use to... Uh, yeah. So there you go. So this is for the short hair. And then uh, you can see some examples of the longer hair, which uh, I'm going to show you next, if you're up to it. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm ready for long hair. Yeah, because <laughs> a, lot, a, lot a lot of the concepts are reusable for the long hair, as I said. So it's always uh, guide strands that are copied to do uh, render strands. The only difference is that for grooming, instead of using a group of nulls or curves, I just use nerves that I model. Well, that I nerves. Now, now is you you using nerves? I I am, and it's only because I didn't find any other way. And if somebody wants to show me another way, I will use it gladly because I don't really appreciate them. Oh, but okay. um, so we have here the lady with the long hair. That, yeah. Uh, so this is the it Italian lady that we had in the ad. <laughs> So uh, maybe I can show you the picture again if you didn't recognize her. Uh, she was uh, the one, this one. Bella Marinada. So it's this one. So we had a nice uh, reference for this one. It's a plus-size model that is really popular. She's from Quebec, I think. 
So here we have her in ads and everything. Of course, our model is not plus size. Clearly, she is quite thin, but the plus size model has really beautiful hair. So I had lots of references of her always really well um, groomed. I guess groom is not really the word for humans, but I don't know any other <laughs> word. So that's what I'll use. Combed. Yeah, Combed. Combed, yeah. yeah. Styled. Okay, because groom is for pets, I guess. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> I would say in Spanish, but uh, I think... Is it peinado. offensive? It might be offensive in English. It, no, it's peinado. Oh, peinado, it's the worst word. I what? would not say no. that to my... <laughs> That's cool. <sighs> it is, all right. And a, a fun, fun fact, uh, melena, the word melena oh. means long hair. Yeah, melena is what, what is this girl have. It's and the it's long hair. And it's in Spanish as well? Yeah, it's in Spanish. You guys have so many words. Yeah, um, El, um, El Gedid, uh, while he was working in Barcelona, and he take a Spanish name for the... the <laughs> the the plugin name. Oh, there you go. I think the direct translation is mane, like a lion's mane. Is it? Oh, uh, yeah, or uh, like a horse, that, like uh, the stripe yeah. of hair that yeah, the horse has on his back. We, in, in Spain, we use it for long hair in general. Yeah. So it's the same for animals and ladies. Yeah. You could say a, a lion's mane. It yeah. would be a, a, a horse mane. Uh, Okay. <laughs> okay, don't start to do like <laughs> jokes about ladies and, and animals, please. Do you really think there are ladies watching this uh, video, Mikhail? I hope so. I, I, I sure hope so too, but uh, I don't want to get your hopes up. What? <laughs> no, if they are, you're welcome. Uh, yeah. So, so there you go. Let's focus on the... Yeah, <laughs> you think we should? <laughs> yeah. So this three. is... I'm just going to show you the geometries that I use to, to groom. Uh, and this, these, uh, I use one that is closest to the face, uh, mm -hmm. that correspond to the uh, interior shell of the hair and one that corresponds to the exterior shell of the hair. Of course, these, uh, shapes do not, uh, take into account, they, they don't have the curling, the curls and mm -hmm. everything, um, the clumping, but they give the general shape and you can see that they just rest onto the shoulders. <laughs> And yeah. these are made out uh, with big thanks to our modeler at Shed, mm -hmm. because with every character for approval of the modeling, he always does a sh polygonal, polygonal shape of the hair mm -hmm. that uh, just represent about the volumes. He does it, I think, just for pure fun. But I use it <laughs> to just uh, retopple. I just uh, I just do a different topo. topo. And I made it out of nerves, and then I just adjust it. Okay, so my... this is nerves, and it would use it's it just to resample somehow based on that. Yeah, nerves, yeah, they, they just the get the the, the base. Hair. Well, I think. Well, I really. Uh, do you like extract curves and then loft again, or something like that? Oh yes, that's what I do. I do uh, a mesh that has a topology that's really clean and extract curve, and then I just loft it, and that's it. The Kristinka system uh, uses that to uh, to give the shape to the long hair. So if I show you the guides uh, without the styling, maybe just the um, I'm just gonna I'm sorry, show you this one. So when once they are shaped, they only look. Yep, yeah, there you go. So they don't look that. Uh, impressive, yeah. but it's only because later in the tree I just go and add my other effects, my clumping, my curling, and and, and such. And you can see in this tree that the um, the main shape of the hair is done here at the modeling stack with my nice tree. Then I have my simulation stack where I'm gonna make the hair move, and back later I add back my curl my uh, curl because if I want to simulate with the curl. I'm going to lose it, it's going to uncurl, and if I don't want it to uncurl, it's going to be too stiff, mm -hmm. and it won't look good. So that the secret is to simulate without oh, curls. That's a oh. super nice trick. Yeah. Take note here. So yeah. you simulate without curl, and you try to take uh, to, to take into account that the hair is going to be bigger when it's going to be uh, curly. So mm. when you have your collision with the character, uh, with the shoulders and everything, you just take a, mm. a bigger... Uh, distance and then when the hair is added the curl is added there's space for it and then you just have to use a little uh nodes to keep the strands outside of the ge geometry and it's enough for that do you find that uh with your curling do you when you turn the curling on does the hair shorten or does it just stretch into the curly form it stretches in the curly form okay as i recall so but it's 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 quite uh it, I I know it looks quite technical but it's uh 
it ends up being quite uh how can i say a natural workflow and artistic. it's really artistic workflow it's really trial and errors and at the end i just take notes out i plug them if it looks good and if that's what i want i just keep them if not i just take them out yeah because uh sometimes i expect some notes to work uh, to give certain certain results and they don't some so sometimes it's just about uh doing stuff in a way that you wouldn't think it would do it and for the for the emission you you create from those nerve surfaces and do you leave those nerve surfaces do you, do you leave them by themselves because you do the simulation later and that will stick the hair as it moves or they do, are, they do are you, only do used to rig them at all uh well they only have to follow the hair uh, the, the, I'm sorry, the head yeah. for the first frame because okay. I want the character of the first frame to be in a uh, T-stance or in a, uh, how can I say, uh, a T-pose or anything because I want yeah. my, my styling has been done in that way uh -huh. and I want my styling to start with that yeah. and after that the, she just goes into pose and then she moves. So because the styling is always, since it's uh, simulated, it's always evaluated on the first frame. So at the first frame, if I want my styling to look good, I need the character to be in T-pose. And then that's why all the things that I use to groom her, to uh, calm her, are uh, constrained to the head. And they are, they they just need to be constrained. Wow. And they, when she's in T-pose, she gets uh, calmed. And then after that, it's the simulation that takes over and that does the rest and evaluate the rest. And about the simulation? About the simulation, for uh, a lady that has hair that touches her shoulder or that has to rest on her shoulder, the best way that we found is to use uh, Cyflex. Cyflex. And talking about Cyflex, uh, up until now, I had to use the Cyflex uh, shelf because um, Cyflex on ice didn't have per point attributes. Yeah. And now with the new release of Softimage, it will have per points attributes, yeah. so I'm going to be able to move my system all in ice, which yeah, that will be is awesome. a delight. Yeah, and, and I would like also to thank uh, the guys on the development of 2014 because we 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 asked for for that and they 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 deliver it and uh, yeah, they were it, very annoying. <laughs> yeah, they 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 was really annoy annoying uh, to use the. Uh, uh, Cyflex in ice before, and since uh, this version 2014, it's it's it changed completely. It make it usable. It make another whole world out of that just for that. So thank you, development team. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chis Chris Chia. Chris Chia. Yeah. I'm not sure how to pronounce I it. We're gonna thank Jesus. Uh, <laughs> no, so, no, no, Chris I don't think is nothing to do with Chris it. Chris is is, is a great. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. All right. <laughs> Uh, yes, I'm really looking forward to use uh, Cyflex on ice because it's going to be so much easier and it's going to be easier to copy from one character to another because I as I said, I always want to start with a character that is always, that is, uh, that is done already. So it goes, uh, faster. Um, so yeah, for simulation, I just, uh, convert my strands into a poly mesh so I can, um, so I can simulate it with Cyflex, uh, so that looks like that little uh, bands of polygons. Yeah, it looks like there's the guides, but really yeah, thick. Yeah, it's the guides that are that are given some width uh, that I just simulate with Cyflex, and with the ma with some magic, I just stick back my strands to the polygons, mm -hmm. and then my strands move as the polygon moves, and then the simulation wow. is magically done. And do you, do you find and do you have any problems when the the guide strands interpenetrate interpenetrate? It's certainly not easy, uh, <laughs> and every shot calls for different measures. It really depends yeah. on the movement of the person of the the character. It depends on how close you see them. So, uh, of course, if you look frame by frame, frame our ads. I do not recommend it. Oh, but you're gonna, it's yeah, too late. Yeah, it's That's too late. It. There you go. Can we beat that part later? Yeah, yeah you're gonna, gonna see problems, but at the end, we had like a certain amount of time to do the job. Mm -hmm. And what is important is that people at home look at it and yeah. think it looks good. So yeah, it's really not perfect, but still, I found that uh, Cyflex gives quite good results in simulating, and it's as it's really good at handling collisions and stuff like that. But very well, cool. that's pretty much it, guys, because once this is simulated, I do as with the other guys. I copy the guides to another cloud, multiplicate the uh, strands, 
and add so, the same clumping yeah, and it's, randomize. It's, it's the same process that you use in the short yeah. hair, but with a uh, longer yeah. hair than and the, the model. Yes, it's exactly so, that. So yeah, I think and, uh, uh, I have a question. Yeah, yeah. to con to convert the the hair into polygons, so I think that's a Milena feature. It is. That's what I, yeah, yeah, it is. So okay. it's, uh, something that you install that does the job for and, you. Okay. And it comes with some nodes that uh, allows you to link back the strands to the polygons right. once they are simulated. So, that's so great. Very so cool. that's why it's a combination of uh, lots of techniques with some of our input, but we yeah. have lots of people to thank yeah, for. I know the, the ultimate also technique is the patient because I know he's working really. <laughs> hard on his place every day and, and I see him when he was working on that <laughs> and he was like <laughs> spending long long hours doing it so yeah. thank you Luke for the thank you very much it's really my pleasure thanks for having me and uh, thanks again uh, to Shed and all the team for allow us to show this uh, awesome uh, making of and see you on the next videos yeah see you guys in the next video thanks Thanks for watching and if you enjoy this, uh, let us know and if you, there are any other topics you, you would be interested to hear about, just post on Facebook or Vimeo, yeah, wherever. We would love to, uh, to see all the, the comments. We love to hear feedback. Thank you very much. Thank see you. Bye-bye.